And we are live. It is Monday night because that is now when the journey is. And uh, we're back again here on Monday night, our new home. Loving it. Loving the Mondays. Loving the uh, interaction with you guys. Loving the uh, revelation coming on out. So uh, quick things. If you want to be a part of what we do here, you want to be uh, a supporter of this podcast and of this uh, broadcast, that uh, God has asked us to do, you can do that by going to www.hcm-stratford.org. There is a donate button there, and you can give to the journey. Um, also, just to let you guys know, like always, uh, we're live on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and then also you can catch the audios on Spotify, Podomatic, Deezer, and everywhere that podcasts are played. You can find uh, John Brown, Grace and Truth, or if you're on Facebook, The Journey. Also, just to remind you, go back and watch past episodes on our YouTube channel. It's so easy there uh, to find different episodes and, and go back and glean from different things that have been said, different broadcasts, different people who have come on. Um, so make sure that you guys uh, do that because sometimes you need to go back to have things unfold in a different way. So you can do that, and on YouTube, it's John Brown, Grace and Truth. On Facebook, it is The Journey, because John already had a whole uh, thing set up, so we just continued, and uh, yeah, so we are live. Live. And John is doing what all of you should be doing, which is sharing Sharing. the broadcast, because as our little corner uh, says, sharing is caring. There you go. <laughs> Sharing is caring. It's a good thing. Yeah, and you know, it's always it's always good to share things that touch your heart and things that you believe in. Especially like I find uh you know, like if someone's given you a word or someone's um spoken over your life or something someone has spoken has really touched you, sharing that um almost makes you accountable for hearing it. <laughs> It says, hey, like, I believe in this, you know, so yeah. um, not that you have to. We love you guys regardless. So we're just, uh, you know, we want to reach whoever God has for us to reach. And sometimes that comes through people like you sharing. So yeah. um, also just to let you know, you can comment throughout the night. Pops up on our monitors here and we do our best to interact. Um, you know what? Like, truth be told, we follow Holy Spirit on that. Sometimes we get to it. Sometimes we don't. Uh, There's not really, we don't have like a set format. This isn't an open forum or anything. This is Holy Spirit led, but there has been nights where a comment has opened up a whole vein um, and just really blessed us. So we appreciate your Mm. comments. um, And and also we release you to be powerful enough to disagree. That's right. And we're just grateful that you guys are here. We love you. We're for you. And uh, I think that's every announcement I can come up with. So Pursuing the... uh, (laughs) place of intimacy and knowing Come on. of Yeshua. And who doesn't want that? I have a hard time calling him Yeshua just really? because I have a Jesus tattoo. And yeah. it's always been Jesus for me. Mm. Whenever someone says Yeshua, I'm like, eh, Jesus. Well, we could call him Joseph. That's English. Is it really? Yeah. That makes sense. Then why do they call Joseph Joseph and Jesus Yeshua? I have no idea. <laughs> That's trippy. That, that, well, you know why? <laughs> Because uh, they're using English, and for some reason we're using we're using the Greek name because Jesus is Greek. It's not English. Yeah, it's definitely not English. No, it's Greek. Yeah. So um, that's why that's why they use it. But in, in reality, it was Yeshua. Mm. That's what they would have called him to dinner. <laughs> to dinner. <laughs> As a kid, that's, right? You know what though? Like sometimes, like if you get if you can just 
detach for a second mm. and just think about the human things he experienced and went through mm. as the Godhead fully dwelt within him. It's like, You mean how? when he was, had Peter on the ground, holding him around the neck, giving him a nudge? <laughs> nudge or like, like when his mom's like yelling at him for something and yeah. he's like, I could just make her not exist. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Just like Yeah. laughs> you know? Well, there there is a book out there oh, when yeah? he was a youth. Well, that's wild. Yeah, and some things he did were, you know. Interesting. Well, Joseph had to clean up a couple of times. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. You can't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, my boy, don't do that. <laughs> um, mm, it's hard for people to think of God in that way. And even to be open to other writings and be open. I know, like, um, we quote the book of Thomas quite a lot. Yep. And that's hard for people. I don't know why. Well, because for so long, it's been drilled into people's head. This is the Word of God. This is the Bible. This is it. Mm -hmm. And it's just sometimes I think allowing God to speak through other ways is hard. Yeah, but the Dead Sea Scrolls, people believe in it. They just don't believe in the books for some reason. You know that that came out you know. of that, um, and there's different regions where this happened, and uh, just again um, pursuing the Lord. What about the Book of Nature? Mm. We're okay with Martin Luther, right? The Reformation. Most yeah. people are. They created the Lutheran Church after him, right? Yeah. And yet his revelation came out of a tree. Yeah. So <laughs> it didn't come out of the Holy Scripture. It came out of the Holy One called the living word of God. Well, the revelation that sent him chasing after God, yes. That's right. Yeah. And yes, then God began to bend his mind with grace. Yeah. And Which the scripture. Wild. Which, when you think about it, is so crazy. Like, at the whole beginning of his journey, he never was allowed to read the scriptures. And then they were like, well, he's going to kill himself if we don't give him something. Yeah. <laughs> and then they put him in charge of teaching, and he dove into that the same way he was diving into self-denial. Yeah. And when he, like, got hold of the scripture, it was like he wouldn't let go. No. And it was in in the revelation of light. I love when they're like, you know, take it back. And he's just like, I can't. Yeah. You know, like, it's sorry, guys. It's not going down. And that is like Brother Lawrence saying, you know, they were telling him mm. he had issues that he loved God too much. And <laughs> so he said to God, well, I guess you got a problem because if I'm loving you too much, you have to fix it. Which is a good problem. Which he to did. Have. <laughs> and like, I have a stance like that too, where I, I realized I would rather be wrong believing that God is too good mm-hmm. than be right being religious and judgmental. Yeah, it's like Peter. I'm, I decide to step out of the boat like Peter and let God hold me. Yeah, and the fruits there. That's the thing is you start to see the fruit yeah. in a person's life where, like, like even for myself, I've seen so much change in such a short period of time mm-hmm. without self-effort. Right. This isn't me changing it. It's me realizing who I am and that transforming what I do. Yeah. And that's wild. Yeah. Like that's... It's a whole metanoia. Yeah. And really that's all it is, is it's revelation upon revelation. And then all of a sudden my mind changes and my act- actions change after. and. Mm-hmm. And that's what's working in my life. You know, the other way didn't work for me. I wasn't right. good at it, you know, and some people might get different results with it, but mine is to keep my eyes focused on him. Well, ultimately, it doesn't work. We see this in Paul the Apostle. Yeah. Who's greater than him in the in what we have hand, got handed down? I mean, Jesus said to him alone, he said, uh, come here, I'm going to show you the gospel that I want you to carry, Right and that you will suffer for. So he was going to suffer to carry the revelation of uh, oneness. Which in his suffering, he received many brothers. Yes. And those who would find the door to intimacy, which changes everything. And that's the thing that people miss on, like miss uh, in Paul's writing. is I love that verse where it says, mm. Because of the gospel of grace, all things are permissible, but not all are beneficial. Right. And what he's really talking about, I believe, isn't right and wrong. He's saying you can be blind and God will still love you, but it's better to see. Yeah, so it's like the stages of being a child and then being a man. And the child, right, you allow your child uh, as he's learning, but it's not 
ultimately um, beneficial. beneficial. It'll destroy your life. Yeah. And he was trying to show people that intimacy will take care of this. Because he even yeah. warns us, right? He says, beware of those who would tell you to do this, do that. What holidays to celebrate? Yeah. Even the Sabbath, for none of these things help you perfect the flesh, but merely what? Fix your eyes on things above. above. So that's pretty wild that Paul's telling us to seek the heavenly realm. Yeah, the spirit. Telling us that the answer to everything you need isn't in self-discipline, or the, but in actual discovery of Christ. Or in the appearances, in the constructs. Yeah. Which is really just what is religion if not self discipline, right? What is like all religions, they all have acts that mm-hmm. control the body. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if it's Hinduism, Christianity, they all have things <coughs> they do to try to obtain lordship over their body. Yeah. But he's saying that lordship is actually already within you. And it's already uh, happened. Exactly. It's it's within, right? Above is not necessarily high. It's a new way of thinking. Yes, a spirit. And, and spirit Christ, and carnal. Christ said the kingdom's within you. Yeah. So to keep your eyes on things above is to keep your eyes fixed on the Christ in you to change you. Yes. Yes. That's what I've been The doing. kingdom. <laughs> Yeah. So that was my rant. So you got heaven, you got earth, <laughs> spirit, kernel. Yeah. It's language. It's words. It's like um, the German philosopher Ludwig <laughs> Wittgenstein. <laughs> Ludwig Wittgenstein. He said, the limits of my language are the limits of my world. Mm. The limits of my language are the limits of my world. And so depending on... Our ability, uh, if we look at things a certain way through a certain language, and that's what we think is the absolute truth, we're frozen or, or imprisoned by that instead of being open to the Holy Spirit to teach us and bring us into, uh, here's a nice word, spaciousness. Mm. Because it's much greater than we think. And so if we'll do that, God will, will then um, be able to give us his perception, mm. not our own. I like that. Which is consciousness. God, Christ conscious versus the mind of man or mind conscious, which is the constructs of the creations through the mind of man that we've put up. I'll give you an example. Jesus said... God who is in heaven. Well, there's two things there that he said. The first word, heaven, in the original, in the Aramaic, is uh, everywhere. So God is everywhere. I like that. Omniscient, God, or omnipresent. Sorry. God who is omnipresent. That's yeah. right. That's what Jesus was saying. We use this word heaven and then created something around it that's language that now controls the minds that keeps separation, which isn't true. Yeah. So God, who is everywhere, and we, first of all, you got to understand that um, Jesus was an Aramaic speaking and Eastern and mystical. This is who he was. He did not have a Western mind. He was Eastern and he was mystical. Mm-hmm. And so he spoke in Aramaic. So to understand him, we need to look at some different things through Aramaic language like this. Um, and so um, the other part of that, where Jesus said, God is in heaven. Yeah. So now we know he's everywhere. So then God is everywhere. The word God, remember we talked about that is a German word for good. And the actual word is? Alaha. Just sacred unity. Yes. So in Aramaic, the name Ar- Allah refers to the divine, and it's wherever you read the word God, so whenever Jesus said, Yeshua said the word God, he means sacred unity, oneness, the all, the ultimate power, potential, the one with no opposite. <laughs> he has no opposite. I love that one. He has no enemies, in other words. So if you yeah. think God has an enemy then you don't understand what Jesus said when he said, Allah. So he goes, he says then, Allah is everywhere. Sacred unity is everywhere. So like 
this is pretty intense if you think about it. Mm -hmm. That means something totally different. Yes. Than God who is in heaven. In our- inches from the Milky Way on streets of gold that are a little shinier than this. Exactly. That's, when that's, he's saying the oneness of God yes. is omnipresent. Is omnipresent. Like, that's and, and, and how do we know? We can pull another scripture that says that all things were created in Christ, through Christ, by Christ. So if all things and are in, in Christ, where is he? He's in me. He's in you. He's all around us. He is sacred the sacred in- one, the yeah. oneness. And so to be able to understand him, and Jesus came to to reveal this to us. Which then brings light upon lots of things that he would say, like, you know, love your enemy. Yes. Things like that, because he's saying they they all are, they're you, they're me, we're one. Yes. Meaning, yes, they're, they're, he's talking about ultimately where we're going with this is God is love. Mm-hmm. And everyone lives in a state of love, unconditional love. That's what heaven basically is when we're in union with God. So to be in that state, we would then love our neighbor as ourselves because uh, we would deal with where I'm going to go tonight a little bit with the ego thing. What that thing is that must die, to die is gain, to live is Christ. That's really what we're breaking down a little bit here. But the crazy thing that we're seeing, like— like at least I think for me the the thing that's hitting me yeah. is like even just that one sentence yeah. completely changes the meaning of what we would teach that as. Because what happened is um Roman and Greek paganism created a belief system through Constantine mm-hmm. of heaven in the sky. Yeah. What is that? Remember Greek uh, your Greek mythology? Yeah, yeah. Where are they? They're in Olympus, in the sky, the the gods, correct? And we even see the influence of even the Germanic and the, um, what do you call it, Viking religions. Yeah. When you look at the word hell in mm. English, actually comes from uh, a goddess in the Viking religion. Yeah. That's called Helena, who tortures yes. coward soldiers. Yeah. So this isn't even a Christian belief at all. Not at all. That was then adopted. So the early church didn't believe this. It's so wild. And we're trying to skip ourselves back in time before Constantine yeah. to what a Christian really was. Well, what's happening is that I believe that that the Holy Spirit mm. is enlightening the path back to the, to the our, way. To the way. Which is Christ. Yes. Even to the point where, like, um, my whole life, mm. everything Christ did was to pay for my bad stuff. Yeah. And then finally this Sunday I had a really heavy encounter where he said, Corey, the cross, I came to show you the way. Yeah. And I didn't understand when he first said that. And he said, I showed you to love those who reject you, to love those who curse you, Mm -hmm. to love those who take from you. Remember they took his robe. Yeah. He was basically showing all the things that evil things that could happen to a person. It's kind of like he'd said to me as a young Christian, there was this hanging on my wall, him on the cross, and this, the writing above it said this. Um, I asked Jesus how much he loved me, he stretched out his arms and died. Mm. Well, and he That's was showing, what you're explaining. Yeah, he's, but like for me it was more from the aspect of you showing me this is what, if you do this, yeah, you will find what I am asking you to find. If you walk this way, right? Then there's a whole other side of it that you opened up for me on Sunday where yeah, it's last like week the we internal talked. thing. Yeah, the light. Where this is actually about dying into ego and self as well. Yeah. And so like now I'm like there's this parallel mm. between the spirit aspect of it and then the the actual letting love flow out of you aspect of it that have to now marry because one without the other won't work. No. And we do we do understand that because <clears throat> acts of love that are that come from self are still selfish. They're still selfish, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, I know. So it's like, um, <clears throat> did Jesus Christ die on the cross? Absolutely. Did he? Um, but but then we create this stuff because uh, blood, light, yeah, and the the living word are all the same thing. There, the frequency of the Father speaking to us, uh, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 1, where it says that he, 
he spoke through the prophets, but now he's speaking to us through his son. That's the living word. And yeah. so it wasn't until we understand DNA do we understand what blood actually is. Blood is actually uh, DNA, and in the DNA is the code. So it is the living word of God about who you are and yeah. who he is, which then transforms us from being in the matrix of our mind. Mm. So that's why he came, and he died on the skull. Oh. He died on the skull, the mountain called the Golgotha, which is the skull, to reveal to our minds, because he came to save the soul, mind, will, and emotions. Check this out. This is, mm -hmm. this is so wild. Um, in a human genome, yeah. there is 6.4 billion uh, characters. Yeah. If you're looking at it letter based. Yeah, yeah. So think about that. Like, and that's just what they they're guessing at. Yeah. So every letter could represent a person on the planet. Okay. So now we're <laughs> going to go back into Judaism, where they say, in 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 mystical Judaism, yeah. they would tell you that each letter is alive, and they even call them living beings mm. or living angels. Each letter in the Hebraic word. It's so the then, messenger. oh, it's alive, the living word. I love it. See, so there's so much more there that we're not getting, right? Well, and we stumbled upon this 15 years ago mm. when we did that. Remember, we found that Russian study done on uh, junk DNA. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Because only 15% of your DNA actually makes up your physical body, and they, they've they basically thrown the rest to the side. And these scientists were doing experiments with that, yeah. finding that people were actually connected, that when they did something to one person, it affected the DN the junk DNA in another person. So they were starting to see the quantum level. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's like, it's so wild that there's like six billion figures in mm. our blood. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's so powerful because... I think that the more light that we're willing to walk in. Yeah, like it's so hard. Like I'm not going to lie and say <laughs> it's easy. It is hard sometimes to let go of what you believe, but he's worth it. Um, and that hit me Sunday. I think that we went into that. You know, yeah. your love makes it worth it all. Y yes. And, and, uh, you know, he's really good. When he does surgery, he gives you anesthetic, <laughs> which is wine, right? The new wine. And time. Time. Yeah. He's very patient. Oh, man. Yeah, he's so patient. He'll give you millions of years if you want. <laughs> yeah, no, well, we don't. Which is really sad. We don't want millions of years. So I'm trying to, you know, get there faster. Yeah. Right? I figure he's no respecter of persons, and he did it for Enoch. And he'll do it for us if we want it. Right? <clears throat> so we're seeing this now. The Allah, Allah, so I can't even pronounce half these words. <laughs> Allah, which is the divine which is sacred unity, and God is everywhere. So now, in 1974, when I died in the car accident, one of the things he showed me was, um, amongst a lot of things, but that is reference to this, <laughs> he showed me that I was like a, a horse with blinders on, and, that I, and he told me, you're selfish. Now, he wasn't being mean. He was giving me something that he knew he would unpack for me as I, as I uh, grew in him. And so that's what, that's 44 years ago or something like that. Wow. So um, what did he mean? Well, I only see my perception that's right in front of me or the program or the constructs, constructs that I've been led by in self or ego. So it's like I'm blinded to everything else. I just see my perception or what the mind of man is formed in front of me, and that's what I'm following, right? So this is formed in the mind of man, which is out of the fall, right? Yeah. Remember, pride comes before a fall. So to be carnal is to operate in pride, which is sin which we know sin is error or separation from a fallen state called ego, which is selfish or self-focused, bringing about fear, which then operates as self-preservation, not in sacred unity. You see what comes out of separation 
is self-preservation. And then uh, we, because of fears, and now we're not able to walk in sacred unity. That's what the sin is. And that's where the ego is established in that whole thing. And that fall, he mm-hmm. tells us, when he says pride comes before a fall, mm-hmm. he was literally telling us the whole human race is in pride. Yeah. Because it's fell and it's blinded. It says pride blinds. We're blind because of pride out of self-ego and self-preservation to protect ourselves because we feel separated. It's a lie. So in the final condition, one falls out of contact not only with the sacred, Mm -hmm. which is the omnipresence of God, but also with other living beings. We fell out of oneness with them. This sound, for instance, is, are you ready, is the central root of the word for enemy in Aramaic. Wow. Which could be translated, one who falls out of the rhythm in relation to someone or something else. So to breathe with an exclusive focus on one's small self, the individual, I disconnected from the sacred I, the only being, and this is the definition of egotism. Mm. That's where we are. And that's what we're, we're uh, trying to come up out of and, and overcome, with Christ in us, by the revelation bringing us up the ladder, back to spirit, yeah. out of ego, which is self and separation. And this is powerful. <laughs> because your will is free, Excuse me. you can accept what has already happened anytime you choose. Yeah. And only then will you realize that it's always there. You see, we're waiting for an event that's always been. That is the everlasting gospel. It's always been. It's Mm -hmm. us that has a free will to access back into it. It's here and now. It's never changed. Mm. That's why Christ came, to deal with the mind of man. (laughs) He did, and, and to cause us to die to ego and live unto Christ. Wow. That's why, like, um, um, we were talking, I don't know if it was uh, on Monday night last week, maybe? I, I don't know, a couple of things this week. Um, I realized, um, I think somebody, I know, somebody was asking me what I thought about, you know, because we kind of get upset then about being sin conscious, and, um, y- you know, wasted time, you know? And uh, I realized in that moment, the Holy Spirit showed me that that it was last Monday that sin conscious was the beginning of the journey. It was fine because it made me conscious that I was there was something wrong that I was in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yeah. and then I had to metanoia turn and to go into the tree of life. Come on, see, so so the conscious awareness of sin. But then I turn, and what do I become? Christ conscious. Yeah. Tree of life, Christ conscious. That's what the metanoia is. That's what John the Baptist was talking about, is, is make, not repentance, not the Catholic word to repentance. is like, repentance. Uh, which is what Martin Luther, you know, took an ax to. And for some reason, we lost it. And I don't know how many last years yeah. we well, lost it. But it's, it's like... It's because... It, it's because metanoia means to change your mind. Mm-hmm. So, and not just the way you, you, you think about something, but from the mind of man to the mind of Christ. Exactly. It's a subconscious transference to a new way. Yes. And so it's, it looks very similar to the word repentance because repentance means to turn the other way, blah, 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 mm-hmm. to us. Mm-hmm. But what we don't understand is the language is actually binding us because it actually means repentance. And it seems that when people are heavy on repentance, mm. what happens is is people repentance. They think that they constantly have to come to the cross with their mistake. And it's like Christ died once and for all. Yeah. Not that you would not be mournful for transgressions. Not that you wouldn't become consciously aware. Of yeah, sin. and he does want us to be aware. Yeah. Like I tell people um, very emotionally most times, 
Um, I never gained anything from sinning. Right. I never gained anything from sin. It actually destroyed my life, and I still have consequences in my life yes. from sinful choices, because sin doesn't bring life. No. And so Christ is trying to protect us from that. He loves us. He mm -hmm. desires us to live a life full of love, joy, peace, all those things, not the fruit of death. And so I understand why it's hard for people to let go of it because they want to be sorry for the wrong that they do. Yeah. But it would be better that But you then would... Jesus shouldn't have died on the cross if they're doing it through repentance. For sure. But it would be like that, I was— That's law. Where I'm going with it is like it would be better for you hmm. to stop— focusing on the sorry part and start focusing on why do you have a need? Oh, I got a new shirt. Quit focusing on the sorry part and start focusing on the glory part. There you go. Exactly. Because <laughs> if you are yeah. perfect in Christ, yeah. if that is within you, then the conviction isn't of what you're doing, it's of who you are. Which is the ego. Which is real metanoia, is to become who you already are in Christ. Right. That's the goal of metanoia, is to unveil the Christ within you. Yes, who you really are, to move from that uh, self-awareness, right, Into to sacred mind. unity. Yeah. Come on. So so you see mind then that free will, <laughs> it's not right? the mind, but the mind, mind of, Christ. of Christ. So you see that, eh, <laughs> that, that um, it's there all the time. Yeah. But our free will is we get to choose it. Well, and, and the wild thing is, is, is once you've... Once you've given yourself unto him, mm -hmm. he is faithful and he's faithful and just either way. But once you truly like are like, God, I want it, I want this, mm. it just starts happening. Yeah. And that's the wild thing about it, is it mm. it starts happening on a subconscious level. Yes. Where you're not adding the ones and zeros, all of a sudden you're just acting different, going, What? <laughs> like, how did yeah. that change? Yeah. Like that's where I'm at, where I'm like, mm. oh. Wild. <laughs> you know, when did that start? You know? so, so you can see that in, in Romans 7 now with Paul, right? Yeah. Why do I do the things I don't want to do? The things I want to do I can't do. So he's sin conscious, and in the very next line he goes, who's going to deliver me? Christ. Yeah. He's taking us up, and then he hits Romans 8, and it's like, oh, there's no condemnation. I'm in union now. I've married him. I'm in oneness, sacred unity. I remember asking him, was this your plan? Maybe with the hope that it was. But what he said to me struck me so profoundly. He said, Corey, you were always coming to the place of being a son, mm. but how you got there was your choice. Yeah. The journey leads to the same place. And it will for everybody. Yeah. It's how long it takes. And what you got to go through. And to what get you got to go through. <laughs> and, right? and, if you, and I mm. saw that even at Highlands when I was an intern. Remember, I saw... Mm. Um, myself cutting through the forest yeah and i'm yeah. just like sweating mm -hmm. and like hacking <laughs> yeah. no, that's and, a good picture and then i looked over and jesus is walking on this <laughs> perfectly trimmed path and he's like hey how's it going you know and he's still walking with me yeah but he's not struggling and no, i he, am he's patient right <laughs> yeah knock yourself out over there Dude, i no joke i have songs that i wrote in that season mm. that were like telling me what i was about to go through yeah, crazy, eh? It just blows my <laughs> mind. Yeah. I don't even know. All right. Mark 11. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to do some... Um, um, shoo. Let's do a little bit of Aramaic again. I love it. <laughs> Mark more. 11, 22, in the King James says, Have faith in God. Come on. Well, in the Aramaic it says this, Ripe are the consistent in heart, H e a r t heart, they shall see sacred unity everywhere. Mm. So now remember what ripe means, or unripe. Matthew seven seventeen, in our version it goes: every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. Okay, it's not what he said. When Jesus spoke those words, he spoke them in Middle Eastern Aramaic. He said this, and in all the Semitic languages. The word for good primarily means ripe. The word for corrupt or evil primarily means unripe. So when heard with Aramaic ears, those words might sound like this. A ripe tree brings forth ripe fruit. An unripe tree brings forth unripe fruit. Mm. This makes a big difference. The tree is not morally bad, 
but rather unripe. This is not the right time and place for it to bear. So the saying gives us an example from nature. So rather imposing an external standard of goodness, the lesson has to do with time, place, setting, circumstances, health, and disease. So he's saying now, see up here, ripe are the consistent in harp heart. <laughs> so he's saying, if you're consistently living from the heart in union, you're mature. You're ripe. The fruit's ripe. People can eat that fruit now. Come if on. you're not, you're not ready yet in this season or in this moment. Mm. Okay, so that's what Matthew 7, 17 is telling us about have faith in God. So the next one, King James, blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. It means remain within yourself, live in a place of rooted confidence in sacred unity. Mm. It's a shift. We're doing a metanoia tonight. Yeah. We're going to do a mind shift here to this place of living in God. <laughs> okay? So when one stands by the power of Allah, as Yeshua and the prophets of the ancient Jewish tradition did, e even seeming miracles are possible. Any being can bring through the power of unity, since ultimately separation does not exist. Mm. You see, it's in our minds, and that's why there's no fruit. So we got to get out of that, back into unity, into sacred oneness in God and with each other. Then these miracles and everything, well, that, what that is is a hundredfold begins to happen. What you see is Jesus. He lived in the Father. Philip, have I been with you so long, man? You don't understand. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. So now the book of Thomas, 22, 4 and 7. When you make the two one, when you make the inner as the outer and the outer as the inner, the above as the below, you will enter the kingdom. You see oneness. When there's no longer an upper, an above and a below, mm. when there's no longer an inner and an outer, I'm living in the kingdom of God. I'm now in sacred unity and oneness. The veil's gone, is what he's trying okay. to tell us, right? Mm. Then in saying 59, he goes, look for the living one while you're alive so you will not die, and then seek to see him and be not unable to see. On the day you were one, see, he's talking about an event that took place. He goes, on the day when you were one, you became two. That's when we went into separation and ego. But when you have become two, what will you do? He goes, what are you going to do now? That you've chosen sin and separation. Yeah. You see? It's good. Jesus in the God, the Jesus of the Gospel, Thomas, also repeatedly uses phrases like, and they shall stand as a single one, sometimes tra translated as a solitary one. Mm. Now, <clears throat> we've a lot of times don't understand this because we think that, um, hmm, it's like I, I, was, I was talking to you earlier about this when there was a time in 1979 where the enemy said to me in my mind, he goes, because um, I was kind of doing inventory and, and this whole thing of dying to self and living for Christ, and the enemy in my mind says to me, so, he goes, if, if Christ lives in you, where are you going? Come on which made me kind of freaked out, like, oh my <laughs> gosh, I don't want to go anywhere, I want to what live. Right? Am I going? What's happening? And y you see, that was ego wanting to live. Uh, N Norman Grubb, uh, I think, he said this, uh, when he went, to, not Norman Grubb, um, mm, Prayer, the, the prayer guy, I don't know if it's Grubb. Reese Howell? Thank you, Reese Howell. He said um, that self isn't able to give up self. When he came to the place of the top of the ladder, when he got to that place where he's in that state where he's to give a choice, 
he said there was something in him that he was in a field screaming and going, God, God, because God told him, he said, six o'clock, you meet me in the field <laughs> at six o'clock. He said, and you give me your choice. And he said, because God knows the ego. And he says, and uh, he says, not a minute after six. I'm, re- I'm retreating at a minute at six o'clock. If you don't give me a choice, it's over. Now, was God really... God was pressing him, man, because he was helping him. And so he said, like a wild animal, I was screaming in a field, saying, God, God. And then finally, um, the Lord said to him, "Um, self is not able to give up self, but if you're willing to be made willing, I'll help you through. So God midwifed him into the spirit, (laughs) right? Because we can only see these things and be willing to let God take us and restore us back in the original condition. Yeah. Right? Come Restoreth on. the soul, Psalm 23. Put back an original mm-hmm. condition. So if the sacred is ultimately unity, there must be one sense to which all senses and sensations return to. You see it? Mm -hmm. We must return to the oneness in the Father. Now, back to that thing that was going on in 79, that that it's like I I didn't want to die because where am I? Well, it was my concept. He was playing playing with my mind because the truth is um, we all are unique in Christ. But when we come into this Mm -hmm. thing called sacred unity, which is love, God is unconditional love. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It is him. And everything, judgment and all that stuff, is not him. It's outside of him. It's in the ego mind. It's in the tree of the right and wrong, the knowledge of good and evil. I don't need it in love, do I? And so what does it mean to be in a state where I love my neighbor as myself or my enemy? That means I'm now revealing Jesus on the cross. Yep. Love them. They do not know what they're doing. Father, forgive them. That means set them free to access me, to come back in. And so this is mm. the whole thing is we want to walk in love. We talk a fancy game about love, but love, it will cost you your ego to get there. God wants <laughs> it to die. There's no, no way getting in. Right? Remember what the scripture for this is? That's a really good line. Love will cost you your ego. Love will cost you your ego because it's not a man made love. It's, it, and we've, it's like uh, intoxication, man. It's ecstasy, is what the mystics call it. And it's what I experienced, I call, I call liquid love. And mm. so it's, it's like, um, hmm. He says a scripture where it says, No flesh will glory. Right? He will not glorify flesh. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean your bad actions. It means carnality, ego. He will not put his glory mm. in the ego. And then you may say, yeah, but look at these guys that sometimes they move in, in gifts and, and then they do things that are completely bad. And it's like, yeah, but he gives gifts without repentance. Be, because of our, he's patient with us and trying to wake us up to who we are. It doesn't so mean, patient, yeah. yeah, it doesn't mean that um, that somebody carnal can't move in a gift. And we know this when we we used to watch that stuff and John, uh, John Alexander Dowie. Remember, it's like powerful miracles, you know. And what happened? He, he repented to the dogs because he called them humans like dogs. So he repented because the humans are worse, he said. Yeah. So he had no concept of love. this love. He hated right? a very strong love. Walk. No, what we call the Father's love. So he still had a little ways to go in this. Yeah. And yet he was moving in powerful miracles because God gave him a gift. It doesn't mean he was at the top of the ladder. No, and it didn't mean that he was right. No. In fact, he thought he was Elijah at the end. Yeah, he got a little weird. Yeah. And he built his own city. And he built Zion. (laughs) And there were powerful things that had happened, but we need to remember uh, this isn't about 
uh, fixing um, okay. Babylon. Yeah, this is about <laughs> unleashing the uh, the parallel realm. Yes, parallel <laughs> universe. It is. So I love that. It's we good. must return to the one sense, which is God, and their one sensation. So look at Jesus. He was praying for a man that was deaf, and he had difficulty speaking. It's assumed that Jesus only looked up to heaven. It says he looked up to heaven, right? But the phrase in Aramaic, uh, har bashma, could easily mean that he contemplated or considered, which in Aramaic... <laughs> In Hebrew refers to the universe of vibration, sound, and light. Finally, releasing his hands from the man's ears, Yeshua, Yeshua forcibly uh, said, Eth patha. This can mean not only be open to the healing power of sacred unity, but also expand, give up your small identity as a person without sound, clear the way, receive the healing power that's all around you. You see, Jesus was in union. He knew what this meant. Yeah. Right? It's talking about the frequency of the Father. Right? The Father is a sound. In creation, we see it. In, in Genesis, where it says, then the Spirit of the Lord vibrated or fluttered over the darkness and created. Well, he's fluttering over our darkness is what he's doing. Over the face of the deep, that's us. I wonder, like, like you just go and find this very easily. Just because I'm on a journey and the Holy Spirit's doing it to me. But I'm saying, like, you, the information was accessible, yeah. right? You didn't have to go to some ancient library. No, 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 no. You were able to I find it. I do this it. in my living room. Yeah. Yep. yep. So if you can do this from your living room, mm -hmm. it makes me wonder why is it yeah. that we're still not doing it on a grand scale? Because of those blinders I had on the horse. Binders. So it's almost like we created an image and in our own pride called it perfect. Yep. The infallible, perfect perception of God. Well, our we made God in our image, yes. And so then we, we because... We're worshiping our perception or image of God. Yeah, which is what? The golden calf that they made at the foot of the mountain, down We're at not the bottom. Able to let go of it. No. And only when you truly disconnect from that system can God start to show you that maybe there's some flaws in it, because if you're part of it and there's flaws, it means it's no good. Yeah, like, like again, I look at it as part of the journey. I, I mean, I spent 30-some years in it, and um, it was part of my becoming sin conscious, then um, beginning to uh, learn about forgiveness and things like that. So I see it all as part of the journey, but you remember? Uh, For when, sure, but I'm, I'm wondering, it's like, like... But when God said to me, "Why, why, why is it that when we go to a a biblical language class, yes, we're teaching Greek, yeah, and we're not even teaching the yeah, Aramaic no. meanings of words, no, because we're only really teaching the teachers are teaching what the teachers taught them. They're not even researching into the base of this. Remember, it says that the word of God is spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. I read the book many times. Well, and and that's that's a very unique statement right there because I find it powerful that the the Bible tells us that it's spiritually discerned, mm -hmm. but yet mm -hmm. when someone allows that spirit mm -hmm. to bring forth revelation in them, like let's say the Passion translation, yeah. which has now I been know. taken down, is not interesting. And it's been completely rejected by Bible people, yep. different websites and mm. stuff. Uh, not Bible people. I didn't mean that So, in a bad way. By by, yeah, but by theologians, certain theologians. And it's like, well, wait group. a minute. This is really someone allowing God to give them a different perception on a scripture. Yeah, and, and, and it's not like we're pulling this out of uh, the air here. W what's happening is... Well, let me say this first. The Lord said to me, John, people's salvation and their security is in what they believe about me, not me. Mm. So it's out of fear yeah. that they build this. 
I heard this statement once. I think it means everything. Jesus Christ is perfect theology. Not man's theology. Christ. Come the on. living Christ. And so I had to be willing to become as a little child. You know, this all started for me somewhere. Yeah. And I had to be willing to let go, to lay hold of. Right? I had to get out of the boat. I just think it's important to talk about this because yeah. I think it's like... <laughs> no, it is important. But but the early Christians, w- yeah. what we would call... They weren't even called Christians. No. That, that was a term that was brought later. Um, um, but they were called followers of Christ the way. But they were followers of Christ, and they were, it was called the way. They were mystical, and they believed it quite a bit differently than what we have been given. And when the Holy Spirit, um, again, said to me, um, can you become as a little child? What he was meaning was, you cannot enter the kingdom of God except you cannot, you will not, except you become as a little child, and that word means a, a mindless infant. What yeah. does that mean? i got to let go of ego. We have to enter the unknowing. Yes, the unknowing. That's it. And so uh, I, I, I enter the unknowing so I can access the knowing. When it's, St. John of the Cross. It's a wild picture to me that we as, let's say, um, I don't know what we would have been, hmm. what stream or whatever, but most people in in the non traditional stream, even traditional stream, yep. can see a clear difference between indulgences, yes. where people were buying pieces of paper that cost a year's salary to get their way into heaven, mm-hmm. and Martin Luther standing up and saying, "No, that's not right." Mm-hmm. But yet we can't, for some reason, see the other things that influenced us as the same. Yeah, because the truth is, whether we like it or not. That entire religion was built as a political control system yes. for a leader who adopted a belief in order to control a region of the world. And they still do. They own a lot more than we think they do. And so for me, it's like, I don't know how we can't look at this and go, okay, God, obviously we've been influenced. We need a new way of thinking. Can you show us? Which is Reformation. And I just, but it just blows my mind because it's like, we've almost, we almost think that we got it perfect. We did. And that everybody else is crazy and we got it perfect. Mm -hmm. That should have been our first clue. It's like, guys, we're not even close. (laughs) No. What are we, like, sacred unity for the name of God is so different than good. Yeah. That they're not even in the same football arena. And we see it. Jesus said, I am in the Father, Father's in me, and what? We're one. One. You are with me where I am. Yes. Where I go, you shall be also. Yes. Like, ooh. ooh. Try, try and, <laughs> so, so these are the things that God did for me is he said, Woo. meet me outside the gate, and um, it wasn't easy. He started to give me dreams and all kinds of stuff, and, and um, I was experiencing power like I'd never felt in my life and that, and love and that's the anesthesia <laughs> yeah I was really drunk in the glory for a few years and Go on. during and I still get there but like it was really crazy in that time oh. you know we could just get together and talk about some of the events in Ooh. those days would be a good night right oh man you know you know what's wild is <laughs> yeah. I get like I've even had nights in here <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> That far outweigh things in the natural oh. to the point where they don't even taste good. I know. I, sometimes it gets so thick just even in here. And I've had people say to me, they've opened this door to come in, <laughs> in this room and said, wow, I really feel the presence of God in that room. And, and why? It's not the room, right? Yeah. But we're on a, you know, unpacking light. So, so God was so gentle with me. Mm. But... I had I had fallen in love with him and was following the Christ. Come on. Right? And because of that, I realized that I was going to have to let go of some things that he kept showing me. And he's saying, he said this statement, and I said it from in front of the church one day, and it got me in a lot of trouble in those days, where he <laughs> said, hold your theology loosely in your hand. I may just want to show you something about it. Now, 
Some people got really scared, see, because it's what they believe about. But for me, it was like, it's really hard when somebody's poured you this really good wine and they're kissing your face a hundred thousand times and and he's saying you know what maybe i can show you something about this what do you think and i'm thinking i for sure i'm open and because of love is what i'm saying and because mm. of deep deep love he has captured my heart song of solomon man <laughs> and this isn't about being right it's about following him who is right because it's about the experience mm. even the eastern is about experience it's not the head it's the heart yeah. and 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 it's like uh an arranged marriage or one where i fell in love yeah. what do you guys want i don't want the arranged marriage i want the one where i fell in love yeah. and so i followed them and he started to mess with some stuff, and he's still messing with stuff because he wants me to know the truth because the truth will make me free. It'll make you free. It's not about, he doesn't say, you will get deliverance, you will get inner healing, and it will make you free. No, no. Will, you give, will it help your soul? Absolutely. I've had it. I do it. It's all good. But it is not what he says. <laughs> well, and what, I got to know the truth. The in, truth, even yeah. even in the inner healing, I mean, and I wasn't what's, planning on going. Down but even here. what's happening during inner healing when it works mm. is you're receiving truth, which then yes, sets you free. Because we went along, and I'll take two seconds here. I won't go far. <laughs> Another day. I don't. But lie. we got deliverance, and we were doing that for years. And then along came Samford's. Um, and it was like about forgiveness and bitter root judgments. And, and a lot of what we don't understand is these things were developed for people who were stuck in the same cycles yeah. and could not find a way out. And God revealed a way for that person to get free. And it worked for certain people. And we knew that it was all based on what he did in the midst of our understanding, not what the understanding did. Exactly. So, and then, so then we people, standardized it. People can get free still. Mm -hmm. Some got free, but lots didn't, or they went back in. And then what comes? The Fostic. See progressive light here? The Fostic comes, and the Fostic. Oh, let me back up one more. Deliverance. Then we get this inner healing thing, and we go, well, wait a minute. Inner healing and deliverance is really all inner healing. And then down the road we go, but why do they keep going back in? Then Theophostic comes along and says, because you can't still believe the same lie and stay free. Because what happens is you believe this lie. You got free from the torment in the moment, but you still believe the lie. So the lie takes over again. Yeah. The, the enemy takes over again. And so you can see the progression in this, but truth isn't information. It's a person. Yeah. It's him coming to me and saying, John, I'm Aramaic. Let's go down this road for a while. And that's what he does for me. He just, it can be like Martin Luther looking out and looking at a tree and you have an epiphany. Or it's for me a lot of dreams. Or him just leading me in a direction and then I stay in that for a while. And he, he begins, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. Come on. I let him teach me. Right? And I'm, I'm trying to learn and keep up. Well, and all the tools that God gives us along the way mm -mm. are merely that. They're tools. Yeah. The china cabinet in the house. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we yeah. got to stop glorifying the tool and look for the finished work of Christ. Yeah. And if it takes a tool to get there, that's totally fine. Hey. I'm As long as it produces more of Christ, who cares? But the problem is, is when we glorify a structure... All systems serve themselves. Yes. Because that's how they survive. Yes. And so even when you get a building, <clears throat> right? So we got a bunch of people. Yeah. We got in a little, like, maybe too big for a house, or maybe we're all musicians and like having a stage, whatever it is. So yep. we get a building, yep. and we start hanging out there. The building will only serve itself. Yeah, it doesn't really care about what you're doing in it. No, it has a set requirement that makes that building function. Yeah. So... It doesn't care if 
something changes, God's leading in a different direction, it wants what it needs. Yeah. And so that's why I always tell people, don't become a church. Be a bunch of people in a room who love Jesus. That is the church, isn't it? And it is. But when you become a church, you got bylaws, you got all oh, these no, things no. that then now the that's another system that only what? Serves itself. The bylaws are there to serve what? The bylaws. Mm-hmm. They want to be upheld. They want to be focused on. They want to be. And, and when you're just a group of people in a room who love Jesus, you have such a freedom to just be on the journey. Yeah. And walk with each other with no judgment because you don't have a standard on which to judge by. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, if there is no stage, right. I don't have to have a certain standard to be qualified to be on the stage. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if we take away that stuff... It, it, mostly within our own minds, then we can actually true. use the stage. Exactly, because we won't be bound by what we're trying to be We'll start accepting who we are. In yeah, Christ. the system serves us now. We don't serve it. Exactly, and and if you can keep it in check, yeah, then it's good. But it's like which is exactly what you just explained is exactly what we did with Christianity. We turned it into religion, which is a system we're which serving. Served itself. Yeah, and it's surviving. And it's surviving very well. And it's you know it'll give you what you need to come back. So Reformation breaks out in the midst of it. Because God says, hey, what are you doing, man? I'm right here. This is about overcoming the elemental principles so that you can live completely free. Yes, it's for freedom. Oh. I set you free. So free is at the bottom of the ladder. Freedom's at the top. The journey into freedom. I had, I had We talked before we got on, but I had something mm. happen today that would have normally destroyed me. And I would lie if I said it didn't rattle me. Mm-hmm. But when I was talking to the person... The Lord came out of me. It wasn't me. And I said, there's joy in my heart for that which is going to be revealed to me far outweighs what I'm going through. Yeah. And it just happened where I realized that everything is for my benefit. It is. It is. <laughs> everything. When we can get to that, you see, we're oh. no longer the pinball in the pinball machine. Yeah, you feel the mm. weight. That's beautiful, man. It is. It's when we get... When we see God is all in all, <laughs> we're able to understand all uh, things work together for good to them that love and are called according to him's purpose. Yeah. So wow. either the word's true or it's a lie. And if it's true, then I need to experience that revelation so I live it. Yeah. Not just know it in my head and can quote it like a good little parrot. <laughs> right? God's what? not big into that. So, what was I going to say? Something else concerning that? <laughs> it doesn't matter, I don't think. No. No, we're good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the post just notes are clear. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. Mm. So, uh, make sure everybody, you are drinking. <laughs> <laughs> and, and because the most important thing we do here is experience Christ. Yeah. Right? The information is to help you, your heart know what you need to get from God, but the information in itself, don't wrestle too much, just drink. So when the Spirit, it'll open up around you and in you, that's the experience of the words I'm saying. It's the experience of the words I'm saying. They're living in a life. It's not about... Um, um, a good lecture. Oh, Johnny, you gave a good lecture today. No, that's no good. What I want to do is open a door. See, I want to be a good doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. That's it. And that means I get to open a door in people's minds, in their egos. <laughs> so they can look. And they taste and see. They begin to experience something, and they're going, whoa, whoa, that's what my heart's desired. Is that is that my king? Is that my beloved? Is that my beloved I feel? I want my beloved. And then they hear more and more. And now you can feel it going up. I want my beloved. I want my beloved. Because, you see, we are really in the womb. Mm-hmm. We haven't been born yet. So we're in the womb. Okay, don't go too far there. Okay. <laughs> so, back to this. Drink, 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 drink. Holy Spirit. Waken people tonight 
that they might drink of this word and really see that it's all unto intimacy with God and knowing him and knowing themselves. <laughs> so be open to the healing power of the sacred unity. It will expand around you, spaciousness, and it'll give up, you'll give up your small identity as a person without that sound. It will clear the way and healing is all around you. It's always been there. It's always been there. God is not holding healing back. We're at dis-ease. When we enter ease, all of it goes away. We're trying to find our way into ease, which is in Christ. It's called rest. So in Aramaic, the word for faith is hemanuta. I'm probably butchering Aramaic, but anyway, <laughs> give me grace. Which can also mean one's confidence, firmness, or integrity of being in sacred unity. From its Semitic roots, the I, this word indicates a connection with the sacred life force through its many outer forms in a way that it's rooted, renewing, and healing. It's all the ways God meets you, like the many names of God. The many-breasted one, it, one of them means, right? That means you, you're getting uh, fed from many different directions. That's all that means. And so that's what we're doing here is we're... Do, we, okay, we, well, why not? We're drinking from the many-breasted one, right? Is what we're doing. Hopefully I didn't offend somebody. Why but not? that's biblical. It's all biblical. Why not? So, so, so God... We're, we're trying to show you that God is all in all, is what we're doing here. So John 4, 24, King James, God is the Spirit. Mm. Aramaic, ripe are those who reside in breath. To them belongs the reign of unity. You see, the word for spirit is breath, air, wind. It's not spirit. That's our word. Mm. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs, theirs is the kingdom of God. Matthew 5, 3, Aramaic. Blessed are those who realize that breath is their first and last possession. Theirs is the I can of the cosmos. God is breath. All that breathes resides in the only being. From my breath to the air we share to the wind that blows around the planet, sacred unity inspires it all. Mm. So the thing that I have in common with my neighbor and my enemy is that we are both breathing the same spirit. I'm still breathing. I'm still in, and if we begin to see a unity in that, just a unity in that alone. Yeah. Right? Um, I live and move and have my being in him. That's what it means. I live and move and have my being in him. So when I, and all these are pictures, they're things to help us understand something how, cl mm. how close is God? We say this all the time. How close is God? He's as close as my breath. Well, wait a minute. He is my breath. Because what's my breath? It's my life. If my breath leaves, I leave. Oh, so he's my breath. Oh, he's your breath. The same being. See how we're one in him? Mm -hmm. Everybody, including my pets, breathe. Yeah. They're living. You, you, we, once we see that God is much bigger than a man sitting on a chair, yeah, we start to access him until we, we begin to even... That's what meditation is, by the way. To meditate in the scripture was to breathe in and breathe out and um, say the name of God 
Think of God. Still, what does the Bible say? Be still and know that I am God. Be still and what? Know. I am mm. God. I am sacred unity. I am. So as I do that, I begin to just sit back into him. Then the things around me begin not to take importance, I mean they're not controlling my mind now. Yeah. And I'm able to still myself down because I'm listening to my breathing. I'm feeling my heart beat. And I'm realizing I am life. God is my life. God is my life. Father, you are my life. And as I do, spaciousness will begin to take place around you. Come on. And this is the place. If God chooses and he won't do it without your um, your permission, or desire. is what um, Justin Abraham says, is in those places is where rapture and ecstasy takes place. God will just, some of the times God has just taken somebody and pulled them out and boom, brought them right up before him because he's, a je- he, he's not a jealous God. He's a passionate God, that word meant. Passionate God. See, I have to change my mind on some of these words because they're not in the scripture. Passionate. <laughs> so he's passionately in love with me, but he is waiting for me. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for us to be able to ravish us with love is what he wants to do. But he's letting us have free will so we can stay in the ego until we finally get tired and realize, wait a minute, is there more? Is there more? And he's standing there waiting to ravage us in love, Mm. unconditional love. And he wants us to be like him. So breath is a really good place to be still and know that I'm God. And and begin to zero in on this stuff, eh? What do you think? Anybody have a comment? We got a little more to go. Not much, a little bit. We're doing good tonight. Ah, <laughs> Jose. Nice. Jose. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> I finally see that. Oh my, Jose. I always see this Norley. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Puerto Rican. He's from Puerto Rico. Married to? Lulu? Yes. There you go. Uh-huh. Say hello to Lulu for us. <laughs> Miss wow. you guys. There is like such, just like a weight. <laughs> just a warm, heavy weight on me right now. I'm just like, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I fear laying down. I'll be out. <laughs> Woo. I'll be uh, I'll be soaking and snoring at the same time. Uh-huh. I call it snorking. Snorking. Mm. It's going deep, like snorkeling. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, isn't he good though? It's so good. Yeah. See, it's it's high. you can see much more as you get more into this. You begin to recognize why that um, paganism doesn't work because God's always. Well, yeah, and he he basically rebuked me on that one. You start once. to realize why Jesus was an offense. Yes, mm-hmm. because he started saying that their God was accessible to all. Yeah, and they had built an entire religion upon the unaccessibility of God. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Doesn't you that sound like go pride? The guy. <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. there's a there's a. An out of court, there's a door there, then you got you in a place, there's a seven foot thick curtain. <laughs> yeah. We got the priest with the bell on his foot, like <laughs> and here's Jesus saying, He's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> like... You don't need to go in there. <laughs> yeah. So but even even yeah. all that, he says, you know, the old testament's shadows and yeah. types of the new. And um so once we understand that, you begin to recognize that, you know, I am the temple of God. My body your body is the temple of God. God dwells in this temple. This is the manifestation of the uh, the city that God or, or Abraham was looking for, a city yeah. made by God. Is is us. even Moses? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like once you see what the real is, then you let go of the shadow. I found that wild that Moses asked God, "Where is the temple that?" It's not built by human hands, and then Moses ends up on the mountain of transfiguration, yes. looking at the very looking at the, the temple. temple. Yeah, yeah, it's Jesus. Wild. Yeah, he did a bit of time travel. Boop, boop. So did Elijah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so, Jose uh, said, "Yes, I will." Great revelation. Mm. Just yeah, drink it, man. Just just. I'll, 
Oh, I'll never forget. Maybe I'll get to this at the end. A story he told me once that just like blew my mind. It was so beautiful, right? Um, anyways, we'll, we'll stay in this vein until I get there. So I live and move and have my being in him. If the divine is unity, then what is the purpose of humanity? Mm. According to one interpretation of the Jewish creation story in the Torah, the human being is part of a sacred experiment conducted by divine unity. This experiment centers on the following question. Is it possible for one being, one particle, in the vast wave of diversity to hold within itself the consciousness of the totality? That means of God. Right? Right? So when Genesis talks about human beings as created in the image of the divine, the Hebrew text used the word Betzalem, which can also mean a projection of unity, a veil over the sacred that reveals its general outline, or a shadow mm. of the totality of the being that is both one and many. So there is a veil over mm. who and what God is as the one and the word is Elohim, is the many. That's all of us. We are the collective, the body called the Elohim, the sons of God, who are one with God. So God in the many is Elohim, and it's shadowed, it's, it's veiled over us because we're an ego. But the, the whole part is for us to, um, Bet Salim, is to come into the image, which is to be able to understand that within each one of us mm -hmm. is the totality, the consciousness of God, of everything that ever lived, ever is living, and ever will live, is all in us right now. Because God is in us. Come on. And he's all-knowing. So it's about that. Will we ascend to the knowing? And if we will, then we have to be willing to enter the unknowing. Mm. Because the unknowing is letting go of what's in front of me with the, the blinders on. Yeah. The constructs, the perceptions that have been programmed to me in the outer world of appearances where mm. Jesus did not follow appearances, but only what he heard in the Spirit from his Father. You see, he was living in the Spirit. He wasn't living in appearances of the carnal man. He had no blinders on. Mm. I did. You see, now the revelation <laughs> on the highway as I came out of death, he gave me that, which had great revelation. But at the time, I just thought he was saying that I was selfish, and I went, yeah, you're right. But he was talking way beyond that to me about ego. But I couldn't go there yet. It's taken yeah. me 40 years to get there, to where I am right now with this. So this girl, in 2003 or 2004, I'm not positive of the year, but it was Erie Strait when we at Highlands was there. Her name was Stephanie. She had a dream, and she shared this dream. She was looking in a mirror that was old and distorted, and Jesus was standing behind her. But she only could see glimpses of him in the distortions. He then told her to turn around. This was her dream. He said, turn around. And that night at four in the morning, the Lord woke me up and gave me the interpretation to her dream. Mm. He said this, that the church has been looking to hear him through people, conferences, books, etc., and only catching glimpses of him, but he's now calling us to turn, if you will, and look to Jesus instead of through a mirror. The mirror should reflect and confirm, not replace our intimacy with Jesus. You see, what I believe about him, what he told me, and my security, my salvation, has been from the mirror the distortions, yeah. that means through the mind of man, 
through their perceptions. Mm. Even the guys that wrote the Bible. It's because it's spiritually discerned. So if I'm going to read it carnally, right, I'm going to get carnal understanding, which isn't what God was saying at all. But if I'll go to the Spirit and let the Spirit discern it for me and break it open, what it is is I'm turning. It's a picture. I'm turning from looking to man to teach to the Spirit of God, and he is saying, now look full in my face and let me show you what it means. And then he spiritually begins to teach me and carry me like the bride up the ladder into the bedroom, back into union. We call it marriage, end of the book of Revelations, into the place of full intimacy, full seeing with the Father. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, I got to tell you this. <laughs> so, Jose, when he tells me this, he was here with Lulu and one time and we went out for something to eat and we were sitting um, at Dimitri's and he told me this story, right? This experience he had. And um, it just like wrecked me. It's like he was at church on a Sunday at this church and they were all, um, you know, the church service had ended and people were all standing around in small groups talking and everything. And I can't remember, forgive me, the part of whether you'd been asking the Holy Spirit to show you who he is or whether it just uh, sovereignly happened. That part I'm not positive about. He could clear that up with us. But he said that all of a sudden he's seen this small child. And the small child was going around to groups of people tugging on their uh, shirt or their pant leg yeah, because he wanted to uh, reach them or or be able to uh, have this experience with them because that's why they're there, right? But what they were doing was ignoring him because they were involved in what they were doing. And so he would mm -hmm. put his head down and walk away to another group. And he said he watched this for a few minutes of him going here and there. And he can tell us if there was more to this that I've forgotten, but this is the part I remember that really impacted me. And eventually he just looked down and he left the building. And I think that we need to look at that seriously in our individual lives and our corporate churches. Yeah. Is do we want God or do we want our system? What do we want? And it's like, um, it's a picture he's showing him, a picture that, that God is childlike and can be grieved. He can, if you don't want him, he'll walk away. He'll come back, but it's like he's sensitive. He's sensitive as we need to be sensitive to him. And um, we need to put him first place in our lives, right? And it's too often, and we've seen this personally, member of Vicks that time, no. right? We're upstairs, the glory's moving, and a bunch of people went downstairs to watch a movie. And I'm like, what? Where are they going? Like, I thought they came here because they're interns and they want to be up here. You see, it didn't make any sense to me at the time. It's because either we live for him, we don't just do Sunday morning church. Yeah. Oh, and that's reminding me now of a song that says, who did that song? Just give me a second. That's so good, God. Mm. Mm. What's it about? Mm. I don't know. I'm getting kind of wrecked by it at the moment. Though. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, it'll, it'll come to me. It's... But it's it's really about, um, well, uh, purple rain. That's what purple rain's all about, eh? It's about Jesus. Mm. He's the royalty, and he's reigning on the human race. He knew. That's what he was talking about. I don't need a weekend lover, he says in that song. 
Jesus isn't interested in weekend lovers, man. He wants all. He wants everything. If you want, listen to Purple Rain and ask the Lord to show you what that song's about. Because Prince knew what he was talking about, man. He knew what he was talking about. <laughs> when it's so wild because I remember the whole like grieving him thing being a fear thing. But really, it's it's about a relational thing. Mm. It's not like he's going to go away and never come back. It's that you miss out on the experience of him. Yeah. You yeah. miss out. I know. And he's sad because he has so much for you. And he mm. has so much he wants to pour out on you. He said, um, oh. you see what he said there? <laughs> Song of Remembrance. Mm. Jesus doesn't give side hugs. <laughs> no, he doesn't do side <laughs> hugs. <laughs> and he doesn't need your your purse of money in between, right? <clears throat> yeah, uh. He says, yes. I asked him because I felt a sudden sadness. And then he asked, and that's when that vision. Opened up. Yeah. Just beautiful. It just, well, we, I, it's never left me. Let's put it that way, man. It, it just hit we've me. We've seen that manifest so many <clears throat> times. Like, we yeah. were at a, a pastor's conference. Yeah. Literally, like, pastors of a revival-based stream. Movement. Yeah. And and yet, yeah. the glory is pouring out without, without measure in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and we're the crazy ones. Yeah, there's only a small portion over there. Let's say how many? 40? Was there that many? No, it was like 20? eight of us that got in. Was there eight over there? Not even. Oh. It was, we were, we were like, we were getting the looks. I was getting dirty looks, yeah. We were getting the looks like, guys, the offering's coming up. Stop acting up. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to be rolling on the floor over there. Get, well, we, we, could, we no, couldn't we, get up. That was the first time I ever met uh, a good friend of John's. Mm. That's all, what I'll label her as. Yeah. And uh, she never met me before. And like all of a sudden, just like... Mm. Bam, bam, bam! Words of knowledge of everything she was going through. Oh, We're yeah. praying for her right through the offering. Like oh, it yeah, was a yeah. blast. But thankfully, mm. she was part of the uh, the leadership, so we didn't get in too much trouble. So right, <laughs> we were okay. <laughs> we were stirring the bees' nest. Yes, just a little. We're well, stealing not us. the honey out of the we, we, out of the hive. What was actually going on? Uh, oh wow! Is is the Woo! child? <laughs> <laughs> this, that looked ripped. The small child <laughs> <laughs> was playing. Yeah. Right? God is good. Yes, he's very but good. But that is not his name. <laughs> 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 uh, so, <laughs> anybody have any questions? And mm. and and are we drinking? Oh. This is the most important Important, important, important part. That's most important part. It's very important. <laughs> is that you experience? Mm. Experience. What was that one on Sunday we got into? It, it, oh, it was good. How's that going? His word is like honey on, on my, my lips. lips. I I just remember Sunday morning the the song coming to me, mm -hmm. and uh, it was open my eyes. <clears throat> I'm standing in the garden. Yeah. The winds are surrounding me. Yeah. I guess I should say wind. But it was like, I was like, and then it was like at my feet, the river of life, <laughs> take a drink and <laughs> taste and see. We were getting wrecked. Uh, see, because. <clears throat> so, but even that heaven is surrounding. Yeah. Is exactly what you explained tonight, that that word means everywhere. Yeah. And I wrote that on Sunday. That's wild. I know. That's cool. I didn't catch that till just now. Sacred unity. Uh. Wee is that um huh. the only <laughs> the, the we're all baked in the Garden of Eden at the moment is what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> and the only thing that's telling us we're not is that veil and it's in your mind. And because we've chosen to yeah. to live in ego, and God's saying, could you enter the unknowing? That means, could you let go of your pride in what you think? And could you enter me, which is all-knowing? Oh, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> well, Might be a little better. Paul, But John says, they will think you're strange. <sighs> yeah, but you said we were peculiar people, Lord. Yeah. And, and if it's... Uh, Called the house of wine. Yeah. 
It's well, the house of wine. There's literally a scripture. Oh, and who were we? We're God's house. There we go. So we're the house of wine. There you go. Ooh. There's literally a scripture in the Old Testament that says, when the mm. Lord makes the mothers and fathers' hearts like with wine, yeah. the children will come home. So he's still waiting for us. If we're the mothers and fathers that are supposed to be the teachers, we need to get... Mm. In the in the, I guess in the wine. even this motion, yeah, should be more like this. <laughs> yeah. So we should do prayer like this now. Look in the mirror. Yeah. And pray <laughs> to God. I love that comedian guy. Yeah. He hits some stuff. Like, have you ever seen him? He's like, uh, you know, if you've never been to church, I'll give you the basic moves. There's holding the TV. Yep, we're just carrying the TV. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and it's what is it? Yeah. Tala vision. Oh, there you go. Oh no, it's getting deep. Telepathic vision. Television. Mm. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> Come on. Uh, you see, if we would have been Whoa. on top of this prophetically, we would have had purple rain queued up. <laughs> it won't take that long. <laughs> Although <laughs> no, it might, no, don't it might it. string some copyright. Yeah, stuff. let's not do that. We don't want to get our no. stuff taken down for no. uh No. If it's a uh, copyrights, we uh, We don't want it well, we don't want them not to hear this and to drink this wine. Because they can all click on that. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's real good. So it's been uh it's been a slice. It's been a slice <laughs> of pizza. So slice. nice to see you on here, song. Yeah. Shakira, Shakira. Yeah, water into wine in my body. I like that. <laughs> uh, I love that uh that Rick Pino song. He's turning the water into wine. <laughs> <laughs> I like the one part where he's like, and all of the water down righteousness is turning into wine. Mm. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Come on. Yeah. It's uh, thick, guys. Phew. So, has anybody got a question? See, I thought about doing this some week is to do just questions and answers. A QA. For sure. If like, I could answer You it. answered one last week. Yeah. And yeah. so even if you get one during the week that you want to ask, just personally message John or me. Yeah. And I'll make sure it gets to him or whatever. Yeah, because we did uh, dimensions. Yeah, there if was you actually, didn't hear that when you should, it's good. We had diagrams and everything. Yeah, because, um, <clears throat> well, we're not going there. But there's much more. That was my limited understanding. But what it does is, again, make us realize that what I'm talking about uh, today, that sacred unity, is really, that's a picture of it, to Amen. understand it, right? Because if, well, I will say this, because if the second in, in the, is in the third dimension, that means the third is in the fourth, that means you're surrounded right now. You just don't see that realm. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, <sighs> ten. Right? Pick up sticks. <laughs> so, anyway. Yeah, love you, Lord. I just... Uh, funny part about all this, it says he would lead us by a way we've not been before. Um, so... <clears throat> You, why, you, why do we expect to know where we're going? <laughs> yeah, I don't know sometimes what I'm doing one week till the next, to be honest with you. Uh, <coughs> Today it didn't come together until this afternoon. And uh, it's just another step of uh, letting go and just going, well, if nothing comes, then nothing comes. It's, you know, because I want to do what he's doing. I don't want to do what I'm doing. Because there's doo doo on that. We don't want to be in the doo doo. It's smelly. No. Nope. Right? Don't so, want it. Mm, we want the wine. Oh. Better to dine and drink the wine. Dine and the wine. Yeah, that's what we want to do. So, if you uh, 
want to enjoy the unknowing to knowing, this is what this mm-hmm. is. But if you want to enjoy it, I think a few weeks ago, I spoke that um, out by John St. John of the Cross. It's so good, man. It's so good. Yeah. Awesome. Maybe I need to just post that up on our site or something <laughs> if anybody wants to read it. I think we've had it about 15 episodes, so they can <laughs> click on... If you click on a random one, you'll probably find it. <laughs> no, no, that's the... There's two different ones. The one I've done a few times because I love it so much. Oh, yeah. John, where he talks about uh, leaving the herd and drinking mm-hmm. from his breast and about the wine. <laughs> Hmm. 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 Nothing worse than a sober theologian. That's so good. I should have. Uh, where is that? Uh, there it is. It's too long for me to do right now, though. Yeah, I won't do it. But I might. I might uh, post it somewhere. Because it's so good. I will say this. And if you want to hear, this highest knowledge lies in the loftiness sense of God. This is a work of his mercy to leave one without understanding, transcending all knowledge, which is the ego. To enter into God. Right. Well, it's eight thirty-eight, which is actually uh, okay. No, some say that that's good. Uh, I think we have to understand what worship is. Yes. What, like, I've actually encountered this where I had a, I was by myself worshiping and I had a vision. <coughs> I went into an open vision and I saw myself at the feet of Jesus worshiping him. Yeah. And he said to me, What are you doing down there? Mm. And he said, I, I made you to sit with me. And I realized that I was coming at worship at a place of distance. Yeah. When you realize Christ is all and, and, and in and all. And as sin conscious. Yeah. Right. Not being worthy of him. Right. And so when I realized that true worship is the celebration of my union. Yeah. It's the expression of who I am and who he created. Mm-hmm. It's the expression of who he is and what I love about him. True worship is being aware. Being aware. And for me, I express that musically. For yeah. someone else, they might express that um, with a painting. A smile. Whatever. Yeah, like like our buddy, he would just sit quietly. Yeah. And, and But for him, he was in deep, intimate moments with God. And it looked like he wasn't even involved. So, so my worship, worship for me, is my life. My life is worship unto God. Yeah. But we also got to realize that... Jesus, Yeshua, has a name above every other name. Yeah. It's because he came, laid his life down to break open the skull and bring us back home. Yeah. There's no one like Jesus. And so do I worship him? Absolutely. Yeah. I love him. Man, there's nobody like him. He's the he's the most loving, kind individual you'll yeah. ever meet. He is a representation, a complete mirror image of the Father. Remember what they said, Israel, our God is one God. So, do we worship God? Yes. Do I love God? Yes. But I do it more than a weekend lover now. I do it every moment of my day. When I go to bed at night, I'm thinking of him. I'm talking to him. When I wake up, in my dreams I do. Then I wake up in the morning, and I'm already in communication with him. I, I never leave. My, I do what Paul said, pray without ceasing. I'm never not in communion with him. Come on. I don't leave. Now, they'll say, well, yes, you do. And you're right. 
Maybe I'm watching a movie and I'm in the movie. But then what happens is he, he might start talking to me about something going on in the movie it's because he's always omnipresent with yeah. me. Well, and you've learned to do life with him and not yes. compartmentalize him. Which is true worship, I believe. Yeah. Do I sing songs? Yes. Do I do and what that's, we think? That's just an expression yes. of One what expression, takes right? place inwardly. Yeah. And, and that's why we have to stop connecting worship to music. Mm-hmm. And and realize that music is an expression of what's taking on inwardly. Um, it might be worship that we're expressing, but it is not the worship itself. Right. And and truthfully, what we'd rather do is realize where we are, because it would honor him more for us to realize we're sitting beside him than it would to tell him how good he looks. Yeah, we're in because he knows who he is. You know, like I remember I was singing Waymaker one time. And the Lord said to me, he said, the funny thing is, is you sing this about me, but I say this about you. Yeah. See, we sing, he's the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. But that's what he made us to be. Yeah, he, he's doing that in us. Yeah, he's saying, I've created you to be a way for people to see the light. Mm-hmm. I've created you to walk with the power that I carry. See, if we understand language again, remember, language back to the first thing I said about yeah. whatever his name, Wittenstein or whatever. Reese Howell? No. Oh, no. We, the, oh, the very first thing you yeah, said yeah, tonight, yeah. the, the language, German guy, yes. Yeah. My language it's, controls my world. Yes. yes. So if we understand that, we understand that picture, a picture is worth a thousand words. Pictures reveal something. So when it says Jesus... Uh, when he, res- when he rose from the dead, he went and sat at the right-hand side of the Father. He didn't go sit on a chair beside the Father. Do people see these pictures? Yes, because God's speaking through pictures. Yeah. What it means is that he received, what's your right hand? Your power. And what did Jesus say? All power and authority has been given unto me. Go ye therefore. So he sat down in the authority of the Father is what he did and is subjecting all things to the Father. So once we see that, um, yes, Christ in me, so that I can enter spirit and I can worship him as Christ, the Christ in me, in you, but it doesn't mean that all of a sudden I... um, um, uh, it doesn't mean. I'm uh, sorry. I was reading something. Uh, it and I am not good at multitasking. When I've been drinking, <laughs> um, it doesn't mean that I no longer worship Jesus as if I am Jesus and you are Jesus. We are one in Christ. That's a sacred unity, the multi-membered body. But Yeshua is still Yeshua. He's just not just a physical person, but he's the creator. He's in all things. And so I can then worship him and see what he did coming here and became mortal. Immortality put on mortality. Took it to the cross and crucified it. And then put immortality back on. Said to us, he said, um, death is your final enemy. I'm immortal. And what are we? We're immortal. Mm. But the wages of sin, error, separation, is death spiritually and then physically. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ, which is to know the Father, which is, right, where the glory is. Where's that? Mm. In spirit. That's where we're going. D- does that help? Or am I more confused? It made, made it more confusing. <laughs> yeah, worship isn't just a slow song. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's not. 
Because I can worship God in stillness. Don't you remember sometimes that would happen oh, in yeah. worship, right? We'd be get enter this place and, and the glory would be so thick, but you didn't want to say a word or play an instrument to disrupt that stillness because he was trying to say something. Worship <laughs> is a state of being. If we were really honest, mm. what we've called worship in the past yeah. or what we would call vertical worship okay. yeah. today Mm. Vertical worship is considered worship that's Christ-focused, mm -hmm. where we sing about God, we sing about Christ, we sing about what he's done, we sing about who he is, and <coughs> yeah. we consider that to be vertical. Really what we're doing is, I call that convincing hour. Yeah. We're trying to convince ourselves of who he is, because we don't really believe it, or we wouldn't have to sing the song. But we don't know it. Yeah. We just walk in it. So we sing, you know, you are the way maker, miracle. Well, who's that for? He knows what he is. Yeah. He's not up in heaven just like, I'm having a bad day. Can someone tell me what I do, please? Do, do you think I could do miracles maybe? Yeah, or like I just don't feel pretty today. Can someone just affirm me? Like God no. doesn't need that. He's, no. he's all giving. And so what I've really realized mm -hmm. is that if, mm -hmm. if God gave me a gift of music, mm-hmm. He would be most happy when I'm free doing it. Yeah. And so whatever comes out of my heart should be the um, expression of my affection. It, whether maybe it is vertical, whatever. I don't. I'm not saying vertical is bad. I'm well, just he, saying he, he, when you develop us. a system, yeah. you you forget about the person of Christ. If Jesus was standing in front of me. And he's sitting right across from you right now. Yeah. Would I would I tell him <laughs> who he is, or would I just say thank you? Yeah, exactly. Like, we experienced that. Yeah. From a, a brother who went to be with the Lord recently, where mm -hmm. a Sunday he got up, and he said thank you one time, and there was a shift, and all of a sudden he said it again and mm -hmm. again and again, and we got so deep, everybody in the room was weeping. Yeah. Because he really had a it, deep it, understanding. His heart opened up. And God wanted to show us something. It was unbelievable. So so the answer is it's both in respect that John said, how can you say you love God whom you've not seen Come on. and hate your brother whom you've seen? You're lying to yourself is yep. basically what he's saying. Because if we're the multi-membered body of Christ, then he is the one that came and became mortal and, and died on the cross. But he's also in each one of us. And so but I must says, love my neighbor if it, I love God. And it even says to come together and to edify the body with spiritual songs and hymns. Yeah. So they're actually to encourage one another to believe who we are mm. that would enter the awareness of what God has for us. So if we lived in unconditional love, then everybody that comes across my path, I need to love as God. And if, if I don't, I don't understand sacred unity yet. No. And I think if I even started to practice it, God would manifest in it to show me the reality of it. Yeah. At first, it's just going to be information to me. <laughs> but then it will become revelation because it's the truth, and the truth will make me free. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Hope that was... Uh... Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yes, perfect. There Amen. <laughs> Thank you for asking, because yeah. it's very important. That was a, a very important question, because so much goes on where people are laying hold of the Reformation, but they're letting go of things that are very important. We're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, you water. can't do that. Like We don't want to get rid of what God created. No, like like— our understanding of the baby might be a little off, but the fact is the baby's the baby. Well, and you can go on NASA's website and listen to the stars, and they're releasing a sound. Mm -hmm. And they call it the stars singing. Yeah. So if the stars are singing, who are they singing to? Yeah. The one who created them. Exactly. To say thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, guys, <laughs> for coming along on the journey with that, us tonight. That was clever. Yeah. All right. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. Thank you guys for coming on the journey.